Welcome to the second episode of Just Candid, an entrepreneurship knowledge talk series hosted by Chitkara University. We have with us today two young, dynamic, radical thinking, disruptive, innovative, creative gentlemen who are specialists in space science. Let us introduce to our audience Ankit Bateja and his co-founder Raghav Sharma. Hi Ankit, how are you doing? Yeah, welcome. Welcome Thank to you. Just Candid. It's very difficult to imagine, you know, a launch vehicle cruising over a speed of 11.3 kilometers a second with global innovation at its peak all around. And you guys started pretty early, I think it was 17 for you and 18 for you. What went behind your mind to start a startup just while you entered your college? Basically, both of us were interested in aerospace. So, since school time, it was a craze like we have to do something in this field. So, we met on Facebook in a Facebook group. So, later on in 2009, I guess 2009, yeah, 2009, we met at Facebook. So, you then, guys met on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. And in 2011, we tried to form a collaborative organization so that we can provide some education, some education, uh, you can say education seminars in this field and a platform to these students so that they can basically uh, talk, basic, uh, they can basically interact with each other regarding this topic, regarding like aerospace. Creating a community of space um, because every individual, if you talk in India, uh, they have somewhere in their mind or somewhere in their heart a passion to you know feel about the space science so with this we basically started our uh, program our project that uh, why not uh, we should give the people who are passionate not only the students the people who are basically passionate about this that they can come up they can uh, share their thoughts and their views and uh, in, in the space science space. Yeah, yeah, in, in, space in aerospace yeah exactly right. So, so we are talking here about satellites, satellite balloons, yeah, right, right. balloon set, high altitude set, balloons, high altitude satellites. Balloons. So like, uh, I'll say in a simple example, making them realize that in a day or uh, the things which they have uh, in their home or uh, in their day to day activity, they can basically feel the whole realm of space science. So this was our vision at that time. So later on we registered it as a company in 2014 and since then we are providing CANSAT education, CANSAT seminars, CANSAT training programs to the various colleges across country and uh, we have also conducted a uh, successful test fire for the sounding rockets and uh, we have also conducted high altitude balloon experiments. So these experiments are basically to study the near space region. So with these experiments, we just uh, measure the, you can say, the different readings, different, uh, uh, with the help of different sensors, like uh, you can say solar rays, the solar radiation which is coming from outer space, cosmic radiation. So these readings are then converted in a, into a relevant data, you can say Earth data basically. So that data is further used for research-based purpose and uh, used for education purpose. So that's how it all started and uh, that's what we are doing right now. So, um, okay, tell me something. Did you have some sort of spot, you know, or collaboration, you know, that helped you take off faster? Yeah, uh, after registering it as a company in 2014, so we had a tie-up with Bangalore-based PES University. So that university is basically uh, was established by ex-ISRO scientists. So they have decades of uh, experience in this satellite industry. So with them we have a tie-up. So in that tie-up we have access to S-band capability. Like they have their own ground station for communicating with the satellite. And they recently have launched their own satellite which is named as PiSat. So that PiSat is currently functioning and is communicating with the ground station. So that ground station is basically uh, a station which works works on S band frequency. So this is a frequency which is used to communicate with the satellites. Okay. Though there are different other frequency frequencies as well, but this S band frequency is very rare, and uh, this is the uh, first university, first university to have India, this sort of and station. as well as the first university to perform the Made in India three axis stabilization uh, gyros uh, developed. Uh, indigenously in India, so it's for the first time which has been happened, and again it's a great boom for the Make in India campaign as well. 
So being a space savvy technology company and also an educative company, where you're trying to bridge a gap between youngsters and space knowledge and space science, yeah. right? right. Um, how do you see this domain five years from now for you know entrepreneurs to come and join into this space and build their businesses? Yeah. I'll just quote it uh, with a statement uh, which is my personal observation which I found uh, here uh, in India generally like the courses with the students uh, pursue so they feel something that aerospace is a different domain or their courses are something different but in reality if we say it's basically a junction point of all the streams of engineering where they just sync it up and just make the aerospace domain. So taking that uh, as a positive sign to the aerospace industry, uh, we personally and we definitely believe that in the coming five years there will be a great boom of the aerospace engineers as well as aerospace industries. Who are your competitors? There is no competitor in this field because this is a field where you need to have a you know combined effort in order to make that innovation happen. Any inspiration, uh, inspirational companies globally? Inspiration like we have SpaceX, Blue Origin is there and another company is there, Firefly. So these are the companies we, which, we have, which have recently emerged in last two to three years. So there were no name in, uh, you can say, if you, if you talk about that uh, five years of interval. So there were no company associated with the aerospace domain. But when we talk about last two years, yes, there are, uh, you can say, 10 to 12 companies which have, which have recently emerged from nowhere and they are doing well in this domain. So how, so how does, uh from a government perspective, how do how do you think a government should look at youngsters like you, you know, who are actually contributing to a very larger goal, you know, into the aerospace, into the space, uh, you know, field? Uh, definitely, I'll say that uh, the government has realized the potential of space industry in India. They have realized the potential of aerospace in India, and down the line, they have realized the potential of youngsters of India. So. We can see that uh, in the uh, in the last three or five years, we have seen a great boom of startups and startup entrepreneurs are coming up. And if we talk uh, a little uh, one year back, we see that another domain which is being arising is the boom of aerospace engineers and boom of aerospace startups, which is a great uh, I'll say achievement or it, it's a great sign, it's a great insignia for the development of our country. And yes. Since you know, why this happened? Because the government has realized the potential of aerospace engineers and they are definitely giving them a good chance, a fair chance I'll say. So what is the scope of uh, hardcore hardware startups in our country? If you see that, uh, you know, any uh, great initiative by the government, you know, especially with the government of Telangana, Startup India, uh, Startup India, Stand Up India and also T-Hub, uh, you know, yeah. becoming the yeah. uh, sort of a hub for aerospace and defense startups, early stage startups. Yeah, exactly. What do you think is the space for hardware startups in India? In India, when we talk about like, if we talk about first, firstly we will talk about China. So if we talk about China, there are plenty of hardware startups there. So hardware startup, when we go for a hardware startup, it helps in like creating a huge, uh, you can say jobs. Uh, it helps to, uh, you can say it can, it can contribute a lot more as compared to the other startups uh, to the economy. So in India, when we talk about that uh, Startup India campaign, so in last two years we have seen like uh, like there are plenty of startups emerged in the IT domain. But when we talk about hardware, so there are uh, you can say two or three startups which you can say uh, you can you can listen their names in the uh, news or the print media. So there are hard, hardly uh, four to five startups. Why is that? that? Are, Why is that? The problem uh, with this. Hardware domain is that when we, when we go for a hardware startup, there are different sort of problems that are associated with this this sort of startup. Uh, first, uh, first of all, the problem is related to the licenses which are required. Then the problems uh, which are uh, comes to, uh, which comes later on, those are the policies. And uh, other problems are uh, you can say uh, different different uh, sort of permissions when you go for uh, manufacturing, when you go for some space grade component. Did you face any problems as a hardware startup? Uh, I'll say definitely I faced certain problems, but being as a passionate entrepreneur, uh, it, it sidelined me, uh, the, uh, I'll say the hurdles which uh, a very budding hardware entrepreneur is facing. 
For example, I'll say that uh, we were conducting a high altitude balloon experiment for near the space region for getting up the cosmic radiations. So there we uh, had to go through so many permissions, not only from the government of India. I mean, from the government of India, there were different ministries which were involved: the Ministry of Defence, then uh, your Ministry of Telecommunication, then Custom Department, then Excise Department. So everywhere we had to give them a justification that whatever we are doing, it's for a noble cause, and it's basically an observation and it's a research, education, research. education and based education based research, which has a very high potential for the students who are involved in this activity. So, at every step, which I particularly think is that uh, you have to give a justification because uh, the policy has not been framed, the policy has not been formed, and this is one of the basic reasons why uh, we will say that the growth and progress of hardware startups is a little less compared to IT or eco. It's a very different question. Are you guys married? <laughs> <laughs> not, of course. You're not yet? Not yet. Any plans for you, sir? Uh, a bit though, since um, there are no plans uh, in the next uh, I'll say few years. <laughs> now it's <laughs> better. You were uh, mentioned in one of the global satellite reviews, you know, uh, market yeah, yeah. reviews, you know, recently. Yeah, it was a market report. For report, the yeah. Uh, it is satellite. very much congratulatory, you know. Thank you. And, Thank you. And so, are there further more, you know, or some co collaborations or some affiliations you already have which yeah, help yeah. you in your space field? Yeah. We are the uh, only private organization which is the member of International Astronautical Federation. So how did this uh, idea of satellite come into your mind? Were you inspired by some movies or some stories or some, you know, sci-fis? Yeah, a lot of movies and uh, uh, we were inspired by the movies as well. SpaceX, Alan Musk is our inspiration and uh, we were inspired by our own activity as well. So one day we were just, uh, it was way back in 2011 and we were just fed up by these Nokia 1100 phones so it was not working so we thought of just throwing it up. So as soon as we just throw it up in, in air so the idea strike in our mind, oh yeah this is a satellite, uh, basically a communication satellite. So this was one such, uh, I will say a driving force uh, to keep us uh, motivating towards uh, reaching the domain of, uh, further into the domain of satellite industry. So then we started with this can set and then with balloon set and now with this components for the satellite. Any unforgettable experience while you were doing this balloon launches and satellite balloons? Unforgettable experience was a rocket blast. Rocket so, blast? Yeah. So what happened? <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, it, it, it's something like uh, there was some movie. Uh, on the rocket activity so we came to know about that movie later on when we had those successful experiments so uh, we were just uh, inspired by Alan Musk. Alan Musk so October Sky was the name of the movie Sky. October Sky October yeah. Sky yeah so we were just inspired by Alan Musk so we just thought that why not we should give a try in developing an amateur rocket so we were just developing the amateur rocket uh, with, uh, with our rocket scientist uh, Mr. Rajesh Muneshwar so first of all what happened that uh, since we were so much passionate so we didn't knew we didn't know about uh, what are the safety factors to the rocket science so we just uh, made the rocket motor and just had a static test fire so it just blasted so <laughs> then we realized that actually we are making a bomb so then we thought that uh, like this thing didn't stop us here so we we again gave a try and again it happened like a boom so again this boom happened and then third time again we had a static test fire so at that time I, I remember that the rocket was uh, in a horizontal plane so static we just, uh, it, it's a static test fire so the clampings were over there so it was uh, like this in a horizontal plane so as soon as it ignited so what happened that uh, a shock wave generated inside the rocket and instead of going in the forward direction uh, I mean it was intended to go into the forward direction but since it was a static test so it's, we expected that it will not move at all. So what happened that shock wave generated and it moved right perpendicular to its uh, design direction. So that was again a severe, severe fatal accident happened. But uh, we'll say that during the journey of your, uh, 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 your passion, uh, these hurdles do come into your path and if you overcome these hurdles, definitely you will taste success. So after third and fourth uh, unsuccessful attempts, uh, we had a successful attempt which was the fifth successful attempt and uh, it went to an altitude of uh, about one and a half kilometers and the whole, we'll say, the aroma and the view was so inspiring and motivating 
it made due me due to those uh, four you can say failures yeah. so it was, it was something like so you feel the success yeah, yeah exactly. like we earned something finally so coming back to the blue planet where do you see your company 5 years from now uh talking about 5 years from now as of now uh, we are trying to develop these components for these satellites so when we go for market research and market reports so they say that uh, in these upcoming 5 years there are thousands of satellites that are planned that are planned to be launched in these 5 years so you can say by 2022 or 2020 there are thousands of satellites which which will be launched from different countries by the different companies so for those satellites they need different components different sensors so we want to target those satellites in these upcoming 5 years any particular component you feel is a uh, fast moving component yeah from uh, right now we attitude are working control. upon attitude control system uh, which uh, includes this magnetic talker system magnetic talker is basically used to stabilize the satellite as uh, he told uh, earlier about the bisat uh, 3d uh, 3 axis stabilizer system system so that basically uses this magnetic talkers so with magnetic talkers sun sensors star sensors so these are a few components uh, which we which are into like the development phase yeah. and we'll be targeting those satellites in upcoming 5 years and of course uh, we will say that uh, in the upcoming 5 years uh, we are also targeting for creating jobs for the aerospace engineers of india in this hardware sector so this is the concluding question all i expect from you both wonderful gentleman is a uh, honest answer you are pretty young handsome boys right tell me something no plans to go to bollywood or hollywood <laughs> <laughs> uh, i have uh, already worked in a movie in 2006 there you go so that was a documentary so basically that was a sanskrit documentary there was a, a saying as a karat karat abhyas ke jarmati ho so ja rasri avar jante sir par pad nishan so that was the caption on which this movie was based so it was uh, i remember that is it was uh, around uh, october 2006 uh, this movie was uh, you know we uh, i worked in this uh, documentary and it was released in 2007 march so a chemical engineer and a computer science engineer two wonderful friends and in their teens meeting on facebook setting up a startup that also in a very unique space wishing them all the very best it has been a sheer pleasure talking to you both you thank know you. we wish a great thank success you, to you and thank are you. all a great you know our honest wishes are there with you to grow and prosper thank, thank you. you very much thank you so thank much. You very much.